Hello and welcome back to Kujo Sound, Wide Nuts Trash. I'm Bjorn Jacobson and this is part two of my household recording session. Um, yesterday I was talking about how to do a contact mic and record various things and, and do them, do some sounds with that. Today we're going to go shopping and go buy equipment so that we can make a B-field microphone and record various electric noises around my apartment and my studio. Hang on. Hey there, so we're at the store now. It's actually called Elektra, but um, to me it will always be Blank Elektronik. Uh, it's always been Blank and some names just stick. Let's go inside and see what they have because we need a couple of coils and some wires for a couple of things, all right? Okay, so I went into the store and I bought this tiny, tiny coil here. Um, it's from an old relay. Um, it is fully functional, so it cost me a bit. It cost me about ten dollars, like five pounds, about eight euros. What twenty-five slotty, something like that, depending on depending on what currency you're on. We're gonna solder this onto an XLR cable and just record it straight up with the noise from the, my TV and other things. We'll see how it goes. Back at home, um, let's take a look at what we got. Annoyingly enough, the guy at the store didn't have the cable I was asking for. He then offered me a different cable, which has four wires in it. These two, the cheapest XLR cables or plugs that you can get, so that we can connect our, our coils. And here we have Spolikov. I got what I wanted. I got all the coils. So let's let's make some B-field microphones. Okay, so let's solder this thing on here. We have we're gonna do the expensive one first. Um, so what there is here is that we have several several connectors, and it's only these two that we're gonna worry about because these are for switching and these are for the coil in and out, uh, basically just where the coil starts and where it ends. So we're gonna start by rubbing these just slightly with a knife so that we make sure that there's no coating on them, just so that the solder will stick better. So we're gonna pre-solder these. So let's get over here. Again. Okay, so we have this now. Uh, we're going to take our XLR cable here apart. Here we are. Push it out. So, here it is. So this here is basically ground and ground and then left and right. So there's one connector and we're going to need to do the other one too. So now we have that soldered on. All right. B field microphone. Let's see if we can make some noise with this one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that we have our Tascam HDP2 recorder here. Just gonna turn it on. And the cool thing about this one is that I have set it to record at 192 kilohertz of sample rate. Um, the reason for that is that, um, that B fields uh, and especially uh, not official microphones like these, they they tend to come up with weird results when it comes to um, to frequencies. So a top range of, of 96 kilohertz of frequency is what we can record, and and we'll probably get some really nice results out of this. So let's uh, let's jack in our our XLR cable here so that we can go and record a bunch of stuff. Um, we'll just extend it a little bit. Here we are, and we have our. All right, so now we have it connected, 
And we're going to see if this tiny thing makes any noise at all. It should whenever it comes close to anything electric, really. It's going to go up here and see if we can get the transformers to say something nice. It's more fun with this. Right. So let's go around the house and see if we can record something awesome. Yeah, so down here we have a we have a charger for an iPhone. And I'm also trying to record this phone that I'm on. So right now I'm clicking the phone to try and address lighting. So right here on the back of the phone, this specific spot where some of the power goes through. Okay, so in order to make this work, you make sure that you solder to the input and the output of the coil. You solder on one of the connectors, and then you solder on both the ground and the other connector to the other. As you can see, there are two cables on the left one and only one on the right. So down here, uh, it's a little tricky to see because I have all the electricians tape on it, but I have one of, one of them to each of the connectors of the XLR cable, one and two, and on the ground, the ground connector up, to, up the top, it could also be the one at the bottom, doesn't matter. Uh, that is the one that is also connected to the, um, the coil over here. So basically you short circuit it um, with the ground. So, and with that, that's the reason why you can hear all the electric activity going on inside whatever you point it at. Um, it's really easy and you should try and find a transformer uh, especially, especially something that, that converts power, if you can, not just uh, 
not just simple voltage control, but something that, that needs to do it in bursts or something, because then you can get really, really wicked electric patterns out of it. Most modern equipment doesn't do that, but if you have like an old, an old toy racetrack or old toys, uh, you can definitely do it. Let's go and try out this, these new recordings in, um, in RX-5 and in Cubase so that we can see the frequency responses that we've been getting. So here we have the files in, um, in WaveLab. And what's happening with WaveLab is that, that we can here see the waveforms, but we can also press three and we can see the spectrum. Now this spectrum is not uh, your ordinary spectrum because you can see over here that we recorded an extremely high, uh, high sample rate. So we have some frequencies, we have some stuff going on at around uh, 60 to 70 uh, kilohertz, which is uh, extremely high frequencies that we can't turn. For some reason there is a still noise here at around 48. See what we can do with these sounds. These these are the sounds that we recorded with um, with the microphone. This file here is the one that I recorded in the beginning when I had not soldered it entirely correctly. So what you see here, this is basically the the basic noise of the recorder and the coil. Um, so theoretically we should take this and remove it from all the other files. See this here is really interesting. There is this pattern here of some. What if we take this, this part here? So up here, all these tones that are here, all these overtones, they're quite, quite nice. Let's um, let's try and um, try and pitch this down a bit. Uh, about here, I always use this pitch bend here because, well, not always, but it's way faster than um, the ordinary. Let's just do it with 12 semitones. So what we're basically hearing is these high frequencies up here. Let's try and pitch it down just a slight bit. So this here is, is the sound of, of one of the transformers, or one of the power plugs that I that is in this apartment. There's also a lot of frequencies going on here. Voices. So what if we take this? This part here um, could be a pretty nifty bass for some track. So what I'm what I meant before about cleaning up these files is that you can see there's some noise here, and basically maybe what you want is this low pattern here alone. But what if you don't want that? What if you only want to hear this part up here and make it the size of uh, of, um, of the full spectrum that we can hear uh, up to up to twenty thousand hertz? So if I want to cut this part out, I'm going to open this. Box, but let's 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 try and pitch this further down. Uh, what? what Because maybe you can tell there's all this sub these low frequencies that are down here. Maybe we don't 
want those, you know? Maybe we don't want those. Yeah, so... Alright, so this here is RX. It's a really nifty tool for a lot of things. I really like to use it. Um, it's one of my totally one of the best tools there is around. So let's see if let's try and make a spectral denoise here. Um, and grab this, and learn this part. And let's try and add it to or Yeah, this here was take eight, the one that we heard just before in Wave Lab. So let's try and remove this part. It's gonna take a while. But uh, not really a while, a couple of seconds. So it spectrally removes the pattern that we found before, that we found out was the still noise. Now going to open up this file. And as you can see, there's plenty of waveform here, but we can't hear it because everything is up here. So how about we just say this is no longer, this is 48. This is so that's what's up there in the high area. How about even further down? So this here is a power plug <laughs> making all these noises, but you can tell there's a clearly a pattern here. Go even further down. Let's try this. It should be really low. Right. Let's try and normalize it. So you can still hear the pattern here. But, but this here noise. It's really useful. It can be done, can be altered into a lot of things. That's it for today. And there's plenty of stuff to find in your power sockets and your transformers and other things. If you make these B-field microphones, there's plenty of sounds in your house, as you can see. So go crazy.